Hello there. I'm Patricia Doyle with Crafters Corner here at the Vernon Community Arts Centre. And today we have my good friend Gail Woodhouse here to talk with us about the fine art of printmaking. What do you know about printmaking, Gail? What, what, uh, there's still more to discover, obviously, but um, basically a print is a transfer. So you, you, you make a plate from anything you like, from the expensive copper to from styrofoam to lino board, and transfer by inking the plate, you can transfer the image onto paper, that's a print. This is a plate that I carved from, you can see the rubber, the rubber mask here, and um, transferring uh, across with ink. So I'll do you a quick demonstration on that. Cool. Um, that'll, that'll kind of introduce, even people who have never done printmaking before, you know, really have experienced success with this process. Now, is this one of the speedball carving tools that you use? Yeah, so the tools are pretty basic now. So and you can acquire these from any of the local art stores. So um, this is basically a lino carving set. Um, you, you can print without a press, of course, using a very simple, this is called a baron. Um, you can also use the back of a spoon, actually. And then, um, and then a roller. And with inks and a plate, you, you're ready to go. So. Oh, I look forward to seeing this. This is just an, an ordinary piece of styrofoam. And by, um, just with a pencil, um, it doesn't require a great deal of pressure. Um, I can press, you know, put some pressure on and put the, press the pencil into the plate or the styrofoam. Oh. Create so like basically a groove is what we're doing. That's foam core, right? This is just foam so core, So as yeah. you press yeah. in, you're making the indentation that will make the line in the press. Yeah. Very cool. So that really, in its very simplest form, is a plate. So, um, so you can use anything for a plate, as I say. We've got styrofoam here. We have the rubber plates. This is somebody bought it and said they've just, they've just renovated their kitchen and they got some press board left over. Can you use it? Yes, you can. What would you use to carve that? Well, I wouldn't carve this because with press board it's like it's particulates, so lots of little particles. But what I would do with this is apply apply images to it. This is uh, you probably recognise this. This is the <laughs> stuff that you repair your walls with and uh, your drywall. It's sticky at the back, so I'm just I could stick this oh. down for texture. For texture, if it didn't stick very well. In fact, I like the other side too. Layering up. I would. Oh, I see. I could layer this up and glue this down. I could also use um, wood glue. Um, I like using sand and also sandpaper. So by tearing this sandpaper, um, I'm going to let it crack and I, 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 I might glue this down onto the. Just using wood glue, I might glue this down. I also might use the glue itself to. To. To form oh, random squiggles. Very cool. And then by letting that just set on the plate, um, you can see already I've, I've, I've um, raised, the, raised the surface up, created texture, and then that once it's dry and shellacked. So we just use ordinary shellac once this is dry to seal the surface. Um, once that's shellacked, I've got another plate that I can use. And the shellac is to make it waterproof? To make it is waterproof, right? so it will take the ink. So I can, I can then use that plate over and over and over and over again to make an impression. It doesn't look very impressive now, but when you see it printed, it's quite, quite spectacular. So that's another way, and certainly I'll show you very quickly how to, to print a plate that's already... We'll work on this one later. You can see this is, this is one I did earlier. This is just tissue paper and glue at the top and then just as we did here with the with the glue creating this kind of tree-like form um, and, and let, letting it sit on just a, a very simple piece of canvas board not a very nice piece of canvas board but it doesn't matter with printmaking so that was shellacked earlier and I'll show, we'll, we'll work on showing you how to take a print off that excellent what I'd also like to show you very quickly and, and again it's um, using the using this uh, I drew the drew the tree you can see from the from the board at the back later that um, I'm working on tr I love trees working on trees at the minute J just with a just with a pen I, I drew very quickly drew the image um, onto the plate and then by using this cutting tool this carving tool I'm gonna I'm gonna take away the piece that I don't want printed onto the onto the paper. So the negative image is what the you're The negative, removing. you kind Very of have to think backwards. So the piece that's staying proud is the stuff, is the piece that will print. 
So, and I would just continue, you can see how easy this is. It's just like, you can get carried away actually, because I just love <laughs> the process and the end. And, and I'll sometimes use these pieces and glue them onto, glue them onto here later. <laughs> I work fairly, um, you no, know, fairly intuitively, and then I kind of apply design afterwards. Anybody that knows how crazy I work. And are you using a narrow blade to add texture to this that you're removing that's going to create other lines? Yes, so the lines themselves, and you'll see on the next print, the lines themselves will create some of the design. The, um, the blades are all different profiles, so you can see this, will give a uh, this one will give a really um, wide scoop. There's an even narrow one which will give you fine lines, and then I can cut directly into the to piece to cause all sorts of lumps and bumps with that. Um, obviously, um, if you left me alone now, I'd spend a very happy couple of hours carving this. <laughs> She's <laughs> not lying, she would. <laughs> and I'd be un un unnaturally quiet during that process. But I have one here that um, I can show you very quickly. And this was, um, you probably noticed from the accent, I'm from England. <laughs> I miss English robins. There's, I love everything about Canada, but the robins are too big. This is an English robin, and they're proper robins. And because this is glass, I can actually use, uh, I'm going to shake the ink, we're using water-based inks because, um, again, it, it's non-toxic and now the inks are so much, so much better than they've ever been in the past. We always, the purists kind of shied away from water-based inks, but now, um, as the roller, actually it's, it's, it's technical term is brayer, but I have to write it on the back so I remember. Pulling the ink backwards. And why is that? Um, just to get a nice even texture. You can see it's, it's starting to, you probably can't see on the black, but it's starting to, I want an even coating of ink both on the roller and on the, it's a little bit sticky because it's so warm in here. And then pulling the ink backwards so that we're pulling it once oh, through and once through as many times as it takes. So you can see I've, now I've inked the plate. And if I take this, which is just regular cardstock, from uh, any of the local art stores here. Um, I'm just going to lay that down here. Whoops, lay the card on top of it to try not to make too many marks on it. And I'm going to put it on the, no, we're going to have the robin looking that way. So let's put this guy on top here, try and get it as square as possible. And the nice thing about this process now, I could use my finger, I could use the back of a spoon. This um, baron is got a piece of silk on it, so it's ideal. And just with circular action, pressing the paper, and this is a good quality printmaking paper designed to pick up the ink. Isn't that wonderful? I find printmaking like mold making. I'm always thinking of the negative and the positive, but you've obviously already think that way. Yeah. Well, kind of. It's always a tiny bit of a challenge for most people that just work directly onto the surface. I think. And then pulling that away. Oh, oh. That's kind of a lightweight print. It's drying a little bit much, but you can see the way how effective that is. And then, so there we go. It's lovely. This is uh, one just on a, on a very a different quality paper. So it has a just uh, it has a different quality of line too, different texture as well. Huh? So at Christmas time, I made my own cards because I, I need Christmas robins at Christmas. That's lovely. Now obviously I'm working with black and white right now, but uh, I could easily add colour to this individually. So we'll look at that in the next. Uh, the On next the plate. Print. Onto or the you plate. Add it with a brush? You can do both. So you can you can add colour onto the plate. Um, I, this could easily be, I could easily put brown and some flecks of blue onto the plate individually with a brush or I can go back into the plate with watercolour and, and colour the plate later. Remember we, we spoke earlier about this plate and it looks a tad, a tad bit of a mess right now but we'll certainly once we've clipped this off and glued it down, shellacked it, you'll end up with a plate um, that's similar to this. So what I'd like to do now is um, hand colour this and then we'll run, we'll run this through the press. Oh good, I'd like to see that. So you can print without a press, very simply, um, using these methods. Mm -hmm. um, you can also print with a press um, to get a much more, it's not, not professional, but a different look to the, to, the, to the image and certainly more complex prints can be done on the press. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shake up the inks a bit, um, this time thinking about colour. 
The inks tend to... That's a funny noise. Mm -hmm. It sounds like maracas. The inks, the inks tend to settle out a bit. So I'm going to, this time, I'm going to um, hand colour the, the, the plate or the collagraph. Called a collagraph plate. And you're heading now into my favourite colour palette. Really? <laughs> I'm so surprised. Patricia and I, when we buy paint together, it's like we look <laughs> in each other's baskets and it's like, oh, same colours. Same colours. And then obviously I'm going to use black as well, but, but uh, as anybody knows, this has probably got, got too dry on me already. As anybody knows with black, um, it's pretty intense. So it goes oh, a long way. It goes a long way. Uh, but what I'll do is just take a little bit of the, the, gray, the, the black to add to the white and uh, abuse them. Just mix mm -hmm. them together with a palette night till I've got something that resembles a nice pale gray. Is there a really wide range of colors for this at this point in time with the non-toxic ones? There is now. Um, and it's like many of the things in the art world. You know, the old oil paints were richer, deeper colors. But now the technology around uh, water-based um, water based inks and water-based acrylics and water-based um, water paints, water is much... Well, we can get the range now. Well, some of off now that people yeah. are willing to use yeah. acrylic paints and collectors are willing to buy those yes. paintings. Yes, yeah. And of course, I was, I'm going to add a bit of turquoise down here. Um, I was a bit of a purist too, and I still love oil paints, but I don't want to deal with the health consequences of uh, anymore, yeah. really. We get wiser as we get older, one hopes. <laughs> or you don't get older. Well, some of us do. <laughs> <laughs> some of us do. All so right. and this time, I'm going to use these little, little uh, sponge jobbies here. Oh. That's a technical term, the sponge jobbies. Mm. Um, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to pick up enough enough uh, ink on the pipe plate there and I'm gonna you can see I've already been playing with this this morning just to make sure it worked <laughs> I'm just pushing the ink into those surface into the surface trying to imagine how this would print off um, is there much of a working time with this stuff like um, how quickly it, does it dry up? It's, it dry, it's drying pretty quickly in this heat so we're, we really need to work fairly quickly although when I print this off, we print it on damp paper. Right. So even okay. if this completely dries out, the damp paper will pull the ink off the plate. Okay. Um, I'm, everything has a story in my world. So maybe, <laughs> there's, maybe there's a moon. This is, remember dear old Bob Ross? A little, little moon in the corner here. A happy little cloud. A happy little cloud behind the tree here. So I'm going to push the white into the back of the plate there. Still. Still want a bit of grey in there. <laughs> this is a lovely shade. And now we've picked up a little bit of that turquoise in there to push into the plate. Now it really is worth taking the time to make sure. I'm going to pull the turquoise down into. The, I knew that would be dark, so we're going to pull that down into here. And of course, with these um, these old canvases tend to curl up a bit but you know luckily we've got a heavy enough roller i was wondering if that was the glue no it's the it's the Wait. it's because the, the old canvases these are basically on cardboard so um if you oh, found some okay. on masonite or something you wouldn't you wouldn't get the curl okay. so we're going to be pressing this again pressing it making sure that the the board behind the texture has ink on okay. i don't want any kind of bald spots at this point and then i'm going to go back and pick up the black I'm going to clean the back of that plate. Pick up the black. And then the tree form, just kind of over the top. Oh, beautiful. To accentuate. And I'm not worrying too much about it missing. You could be more precise, you know, if that's your yeah, preference. Right. That's definitely not my preference. No. <laughs> back to the grey. They say music is the space between the notes, right? Yes. <laughs> I'll leave some white to appreciate the dark. That's sweet. You know, and again, I'm coming back with the white because it kind of overspilled a little bit mm -hmm. with the grey. But it suits. And you can keep kind of playing with this plate a little bit. And even, even with the plate, you know, I might come back with um, a sharp pencil. Now, it's not about the pencil, it's about the mark. And then kind of scratch back again into the wet ink. Which again gives you more texture. Yeah. 
Now I could keep playing with this for probably a long time, me, knowing, knowing me. Put a bit of white in here, drag it back. Most of all in art, I think it's, um, I'm, I'm working with students. I mean, be playful, um, take a risk. If this doesn't work out the way I want it, I take the experience of printing this and then transfer change into the next plate. So it doesn't always have to be perfect on each plate. And are you, if, if you were to yeah. find that to be the case, yeah. would you, um, even though it's shellacked, would you be able to add more texture to it and Absolutely. then re-shellac it? Absolutely. And I'll sometimes go back into a, particularly if I've made the plate from uh, a, a wood block, for example, I'll go back into the plate three or four times to get, to get what I need. So I've cleaned off the back. The ink's applied to the, to the piece and um, the next, we're going we're gonna to transfer this over to, onto the damp paper. So now we're going to move over to the press. So we've got our plate here on the press. It's all inked and ready to go. And Gail's going to show us how the print is made. The paper, you can see the paper is bigger than the, the plate. It's slightly damp. And now we're just going to place this as squarely as I can onto the, onto the plate. Anything gently else? so as not to smudge. Very gently. Good. So we have, the, uh, we have the damp paper now on the plate. We're going to use this paper. protection paper. This is just newsprint. And then the felts, um, we're going to lay down one at a time, try not to get any creases in it. This, this provides a nice cushion. Um, for the pr protects the, the press a little bit too, but it provides a nice kind of bouncy cushion to get through. And then we're going to start, uh, and you can see this is, this is more of a homemade press, so normally these plates, as we have on the other one, are made of steel, but we've just got a piece of hardboard going through here. And we're going to, we're going to pull, pull she's through the press level and even. I'll keep this level if you want to do the... the okay. Wheel. Is, uh, you, you never let children do this. They get really carried away. I think they're driving the ship. And then you can feel the you can feel the plate bite. So I know the plate is there, okay. and I'm going to very slowly and evenly drive this over the the plate, and try and avoid Patricia's fingers. So we're going to lift the blankets off one by one. And, and of course, if this was a steel plate, we wouldn't have the wobble. Okay. But however, it's okay. It also will be on your toes. Perfect. So and then very this is Ooh, where we exciting. start lifting it off very gently. Where the magic happens. You can see it's bitten into the plate. I can see by the edges, yes. not quite evenly. Then that's probably because of that that curved. You know, I was worried about that curved surface. Yeah. But what the heck? And then Here we it just comes. very, very gently lift it off, lift it off, lift it off, lift it off. Oh, girl, and that's, that's lovely. That's pretty good. Pretty good. That's beautiful. And um, you can see from this, Patricia, that how lovely that the that white halo around that glue formed is. Just, just softened everything, giving it kind of a that mysterious kind of moody, moody, moody feeling. Yeah, moody. I like it a lot. So this was the last one. So you know, this was an early one, like the first, the first pull off. Uh, when you print again, you make different decisions about how much ink to put on, how much to take away, whether you need more scratching on the plate. When I print again, you know, I'll be I, because I'm enjoying that little scratching in the plate here. It adds a lot to it. It does, I think. And, and I, but I'll be pulling it over here a bit to provide some kind of balance or con some c continuity anyway. And then there's a, a couple of little kind of hiccups of blue in there that I might just go in with a wet brush and kind of and, and, and fade out a little bit. Can you do that with this? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. yeah because it's water-based ink, right? That's the benefit of water instead of oil. So it's, right. And then and, and the, one of my favourite things to do, and I think I, sh I showed, I was talking to you earlier about this plate, this was just um, the inking plate that I used, but but now I can I can go in with a, these beautiful pencils that I love these big fat pencils and then play on the plate. So um, just with with very simple pencil marks, you know, I can use this as as a foundation, background, a background for my for an, another piece of art. Isn't that wonderful? So sometimes if they don't work out as a, as a finished print, I'll go and play afterwards with watercolor pencils or pencils. Um, if you don't like something, it's probably just because it isn't finished yet. So keep going. Is it correct? That's keep, keep playing very, with the plate. Very well done. I love the texture in this one especially. Join us again on Crafters Corner on Shaw TV. And thank you so much, Gail, for coming and showing us this. It was fabulous. That was fun, and I'm going to watch all the others too. <laughs> It'll be great.